Howdy, my name is Atiana Lopez and today I will be presenting on the topic of political cartoons supporting World War I. Many cartoonists created cartoons for the U.S. government encouraging Americans to put in their effort to support the war in any possible way that they could. Like the propaganda poster seen above, the U.S. government enlisted the cartoonists to create illustrations that encouraged Americans to ration their food in order to allow more food to be sent out to the soldiers fighting abroad. Other types of propaganda that was created an encouragement to support the war were cartoons encouraging American people to purchase war bonds to help support the war effort. In this political cartoon, you are able to see Uncle Sam and the Campbell kids encouraging the audience to eat their vegetables, especially in soup. Children couldn't afford liberty bonds, but in to encourage them to support the war, the government sold war saving stamps worth 10 cents and 25 cents. Like the war bonds, the stamps paid interest. In this poster, Uncle Sam teaches children a lesson not only about patriotism, but about the importance of saving. The picture depicts Uncle Sam explaining to two children the importance of saving stamps. In this propaganda poster, you can see a large foot depicted as Uncle Sam about to stomp on a running figure that is being depicted as a caser. In this propaganda poster, the artist is encouraging the American to purchase government bonds and contribute to the war effort in order to help defeat the enemy. In this case, it's being portrayed as a caser. In 1917, we were at war over there, but back here at home, it was all out war on the wheat, meat, sugar, and animal fats. Food will win the war, Uncle Sam proclaimed, exhorting women to win the war in the kitchen by restricting those precious commodities so that the little boys would be well fed. The image depicts a woman, most likely a housewife, being the key to victory for the country by rationing their food in order to allow for more food to be sent to the soldiers in Europe, for them to have enough strength to fight and obtain victory. Unlike food rationing, which was mandatory during World War II, during the Great War, the restrictions were wholly voluntary. In an age when Americans were gluten, were gluten and massive meat eaters, getting the public to change their food habits was no easy feat. In this propaganda poster, the U.S. Food Administration encourages the American people to eat less wheat, meat, sugar, and fats. This poster was created in order to motivate the American people to ration their food in order to have more food available for the soldiers fighting for their safety of their country. Guilt and shame, those twin hay meetings of social pressure, worked like a charm, just as the government had whipped a very reluctant country to go to war in order to make the world safe for democracy, so Uncle Sam became skilled at food shaming the American public. In this poster, Uncle Sam is portrayed as crestfallen because the American people are not rationing their food and are preventing more food supplies to be sent to their soldiers who are risking their lives in Europe for their safety. This poster of Uncle Sam was created to bring shame to those that weren't doing all what they could to support the soldiers abroad. When America entered the war in April of 1917, the U.S. Food Administration was formed to help feed the American armies and her allies. Herbert Hoover, the hero who saved Belgium from starving, was a logical choice to head it, along with the F.A. President Woodrow Wilson, had it created another agency, to com the Committee of Public Information, to turn the tide of public opinion on the war. They now actively sold American people on the very war the President sought to avoid the year before when he ran for President under the slogan, He Kept Us Out of War. Rhetoric was shifted completely and effortlessly to win the war to end all wars. The Committee on Public Information monopolized every medium and every avenue of communication available at the time with the goal of mobilizing and creating a nation of enthusiastic soldiers and home front warriors for democracy and convince them that they were needed to help make the world safe for democracy. What they are trying to portray in the poster was the difficulties that women were going through trying to feed their families and themselves while at the same time working hard to feed the soldiers abroad. This image was created to bring awareness that the everyone needed to put their effort as much effort needed to win the war and support soldiers abroad. This propaganda poster was created to warn Americans against wasting food. This image also encouraged Americans into being aware that every time they ate three times a day, they should think of the starving people in Europe and the soldiers who are fighting out battles and keep those rules in mind. The image depicts a man standing by a seashore, gazing at the chips which one of the chips being in smokes. This cartoon tries to promote that the wasting of food can be caught can be one of the causes for the defeat of our troops abroad. This propaganda poster is portrayed as a list of things of which the people shouldn't waste their sugar on. The posters encourage Americans to save their sugar for the soldiers abroad, 
The U.S. Food Administration encouraged Americans to, instead of using sugar, which Italy and France needed desperately for their soldiers, they were urged to use other sweeteners, like syrup and honey. In this propaganda poster, we can see a woman reaching out to the viewers in encouragement to sign their country's pledge to save food in order to feed the soldiers abroad that are fighting for the safety of their country. These patriotic pledges were directed specifically to rally the middle-class housewife and play a very important role in producing social pressure to promise to have at least one wheatless day a week, one wheatless meal a day, one meatless day a week, and one meatless meal each day, and then to hang cards attesting to their oath. This political cartoon was created for the U.S. government and was used as propaganda to recruit men for the military during World War I. The main purpose of this poster was to encourage Americans to enlist in the army. The United States needed a lot of people to enlist in the army because enlisting became a matter of survival for America, as well as an act of patriotism. The cartoon portrays a man with white hair and white beard known as Uncle Sam pointing towards the audience, demanding that they join the army. Uncle Sam became a great symbol for recruitment as well as representing the United States. And with this, I have come to the end of my presentation. Thank you.